Across the animal kingdom, animals communicate in all the same ways that we do. It differs from species to species, but a lot of them use their words, a lot of them use body language, and a lot of them use smells. They talk about a lot of the same things that we do. They talk about finding food and where they want to sleep and what they're afraid of and who they care about. My name is Sierra Seifert. I'm a PhD student in bioengineering at Harvard University. Um, I study animal communication and cognition. I've studied a lot of different animal species, which is also what I really love about my work, is because I'm more about the tool set than about the application. Um, so I got to start off with ants, and then I think it was lizards, uh, octopi for a hot second, and then fruit flies, pigs, sperm whales, foxes. Uh, language trained apes and now a little bit with humans as well. Ants communicate primarily through pheromones and through body language, which makes sense because they're these little tiny insects, right? So they're running around and they're bumping into each other to try to communicate an alarm signal or distress. Pigs are doing a lot through their vocalizations. We were able to determine that they have like a vocabulary sort of to their vocalizations. Like there's a minimum number of sounds that they make that have specific meanings, which is really cool. Foxes also communicate through um, vocalizations, but just like your household dog, there's a lot going on with the body language and smell as well. Zooming out, sperm whales communicate primarily through uh, vocalizations, which makes them really good to study uh, with machine learning as well, because you only have to look at the vocalizations, right? We're not so interested in the body language because that doesn't seem to be as important on that scale. And I got to do some research with people who have studied them for decades and learned from those marine biologists who have gotten to know the whales so well that they can speak a little bit of sperm whale. And so the whale will go like, click, 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 click. And the marine biologists would be like, oh, that whale is greeting another whale. That means like, hi, I'm from Dominica. Where are you from? Because they know that sperm whales around Dominica will always start that conversation. If we could communicate with sperm whales, it would be super valuable because we could tell them like, hey, there's a shipping lane here. And so don't take your babies this way or you might get hit by a giant ship. Being able to communicate with them would allow us to give them warnings. It would allow us to understand why they're making the decisions that they're, they're making. Um, and it's the same thing when we talk about animal welfare on farms as well. My big focus right now is in using machine learning to better understand what animals are thinking and saying. When we're talking about communication, like if we're talking about a single signal, that's easy enough to look at with a human eye or with our ears. Um, but if you're talking about a whole bunch of signals, then something like machine learning can be very useful for processing really information-rich data like that. And if we're talking about cognition, then we want to go look at brain scans. And brain scans, I mean, brains are the most complicated things that we <laughs> know to exist in nature. And so being able to look at that with machine learning is, I think, the future because Machine learning is the only thing that we have that's complex enough to tackle that problem. And I think curiosity is maybe the most natural human emotion, and it makes a lot of sense to be curious about what's going on with so much of on our planet. Like, we're just a small fraction of all the conversations that are happening here, and so, of course, it makes sense to want to know what else is being talked about.